When you buy a new computer, vacuum cleaner, or even a new car, and it turns out to be faulty, you take it back and expect it to be fixed or replaced. But what about when you buy a brand new home? Then it's a bit more complicated. And that's why the Ontario government created Terion 40 years ago to provide warranties for people in just such a situation. But it hasn't been all smooth sailing. And this week, the province announced an overhaul of Terion's mandate. Joining us now to explain via Skype from Minneapolis, Minnesota, Karen Somerville, President, Canadians for Properly Built Homes. And with us here in studio, Kenyon Wallace, reporter for the Toronto Star. Welcome to you both. Thank you. Now, some people Thank watching you. at home might not know what Terion is. Uh, Karen, can you explain what is Terion? Sure, quick overview. Terion was established about 41 years ago by the Ontario government uh, with a, to be focused on consumer and consumer protection for newly built homes. And uh, specifically, they have two roles currently. One is the regulator of the building industry, and then secondly, the warranty provider. And it's a, it's a delegated administrative authority, and it's important to recognize that in establishing Terion as a DAA, it does not have, uh, there's no oversight by the Ombudsman of Ontario or the Auditor General of Ontario for, or the Attorney General for Ontario. None of those organizations have oversight of Terion. And uh, Justice J. Douglas Cunningham's final report to the Ontario government had this to say about Terion. Ontario's mandatory new home warranty program was established in 1976. The basic structure of the warranty program and how it is delivered has not changed in 40 years. In some respects, Ontario is a leader in new home warranty protection relative to peers across Canada and the U.S. Nonetheless, there are fundamental problems with the current program and delivery structure that should be addressed. Kenyon, you've been reporting on the Terion story for quite some time. What initially drew you to this issue? Uh, well, at the Star, we get tips from people uh, in our daily work, and uh, we had heard from some homeowners who had gone through the Terion warranty process and were not necessarily very satisfied with the way it turned out. So, um, what we'd complaints like to, did they have? Uh, things like um, so, when you move into a new home, uh, you are allowed to make a claim for uh, certain defects in workmanship and materials, mm -hmm. and. Um, things like, say, unfinished painting or a, a cracked garage floor or a cracked window. And uh, when they made claims uh, for these items with Terion, they felt that the way that Terion treated the claims was, was not particularly consumer friendly. So they were obviously upset because most people, when they buy a home, it's the biggest purchase they're going to make in their lives. Um, so you want to make sure that what you get is, is going to last a long time. And so they had some complaints about the process, and so we, we were told about this at the Star, and, uh, and then you just start looking into it. Uh, back in 2013, That's correct, you yeah. wrote the following. Uh, Buyers of new homes and condominiums in Ontario are entitled to Terion's warranty program that protects against loss of deposits, delays in occupancy, defects in work and material, and major structural problems, among other things. Terion also regulates new home builders, sets construction performance guidelines, and prosecutes illegal builders. Karen, is this typically the way that new home buyers are protected across Canada? Yes, uh, most jurisdictions in Canada have uh, warranty programs. It's a it's a patchwork quilt across the country. Um, for example, uh, Manitoba, and we were involved in Manitoba's new legislation, their regulations. They just revised theirs last year. Uh, but it's important to recognize that uh, Terion is indeed unique, and Justice Cunningham talked about this. The way that the Ontario government set this up is that um, Terion, as I mentioned earlier, is both the regulator of the industry and the warranty provider and no other jurisdiction in Ontario or pardon me in Canada or in other jurisdictions that Justice Cunningham looked at plays this dual role and this is a fundamental problem that has existed with Terion from the very beginning 41 years ago so this legislation has been flawed from the outset in many respects but that's one significant respect Kenyon it's been reported that over 85 percent of new home owners never submit a claim to Terion uh, so how big a problem actually exists? Well, I think uh, when you think about a warranty program, it's important to note that it's in existence for those few times when things do go wrong. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to have a huge response to a warranty program. You want to make sure that, that you want the, the quality of homes to be, to be good. Uh, but when, it, when people do have problems, uh, I think it's important that the, the warranty program is effective. Um, 
In 2015, which is the latest year we have for numbers from Tarion, there were about 500 claims made uh, for defects in new homes, and uh, that resulted in about $11 million uh, in payouts. So the numbers are, are substantial, mm -hmm. um, but you're right. I mean, the majority of homeowners don't seem to have a problem with their home, but when you do have a problem, you want to make sure that the existing warranty program uh, works. And Karen, if a home buyer does have an issue with their builder and brings it to the attention of Tarion, how effective is the current uh, dispute resolution process? Well, I, it's important to uh, be fair to Terry on. Uh, obviously, they do do some good things. Um, but the people that we hear from, um, by the time they reach us, they're usually in deep trouble. They've gone through the system, and they're very unhappy. And they report to us that Terry on has been very ineffective in most cases that we hear of, of handling their claim. And it's, you know, there are a number of reasons for this. Uh, but clearly, the dissatisfaction level is significant enough that Justice Cunningham heard about it as well. He did extensive work over a year, and uh, we don't have any precise numbers, obviously, from his report, but I can tell you that from the complaints that CPBH gets on a regular basis, it's a very serious problem, and that's why CPBH has persisted all of these years, as well as many other people who just wouldn't take no for an answer. We realize that the purchase of a home is the largest purchase most people make, and when people have problems, and the kinds of problems we hear about, to be clear, are very serious problems, often impacting or affecting the uh, violations of the Ontario Building Code, which is health and safety focused. Okay, because I was going to ask you follow up because you said they're usually in big problems when they contact you. That's um, right. So can you give us some examples? Absolutely. It can be everything from uh, crack foundation, faulty heating systems, uh, leaking roofs, you name it. We're, we're not talking about flaking paint, uh, flaking paint at CPBH. We're talking mainly about Ontario Building Code violations. Um, Kenyon, what will change according to the announcement that the government and consumer services minister Tracy McCharles made this week? So there's going to be four substantial changes. The first one, I think, is that uh, what the government's going to do is remove the regulatory role from Tarion so that you don't have the same organization regulating builders uh, while also making decisions about what items are warranted. So they're going to, to create a new, basically a new warranty provider. Mm -hmm. Maybe it will be Tarion. I think it's going to stay Tarion for now. Mm -hmm. Uh, but the, there's going to be a new designated administrative authority that will that will regulate the builders. Uh, what they're also going to do is um, start an immediate review of uh, deposit protections. Uh, as we've seen from uh, the Toronto real estate market, it, it's a pretty hot one. And uh, Tarion currently pr protects for uh, certain amounts for deposits when you go and buy a new home. So for condos, I think it's about $20,000. And for new homes, it's uh, forty thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. Now that is uh, maybe worked. That might have worked maybe ten years ago when the prices of real estate were a lot lower in Toronto and the GTA and in Ontario in general. But now um, that may only cover a portion of your deposit. So if the builder goes bankrupt or has financial problems, you might only get back your your a, a small portion of what you actually put down. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing the government's going to do is remove the onus on the homeowner to have to prove that there's a defect. So when I inter interviewed uh, Justice Cunningham last year, he provided a, a very good analogy, and that was when you have a problem with your car, you as the car owner, you don't have to go into your engine and know specifically what it is that's wrong with your car. You can take it to a garage and you can say, well, it's making a funny noise, I think there's something wrong. Um, similarly, he's suggesting that when it comes to a home warranty issue, that the homeowner doesn't have to prove that there's something wrong with, say, their heating system. They can say, it doesn't sound right or it's not heating my house properly. Because and that right should now be enough. the consumer has to prove. Yeah, there is an onus of proof on consumers mm -hmm. to say, this is the problem. Mm -hmm. um, and The final thing? Yeah, and, and the final thing that, uh, that, that, that the government's going to do is remove the ability for the Tarion board to set its own regulations surrounding things like uh, builder performance and warranty terms. That's unique to Tarion. Most, uh, well, actually all designated administrative authorities in Ontario, um, they can't do that. So this is going to bring Tarion more in line with, with the others in Ontario. And Karen, I wanted to turn it back to you. Um, how different is what was announced from what Justice J. Douglas Cunningham had recommended in his report to the government? 
Um, so uh, Justice Cunningham made 37 recommendations, and we're very pleased uh, that Justice Cunningham went as thoroughly as he did, uh, and we're also pleased that the government has announced these first steps that Kenyon just reviewed. Uh, but one of the key things that Justice Cunningham has recommended uh, is breaking up Tarion's monopoly. Many other jurisdictions have multi-warranty providers. Uh, Justice Cunningham also recommended that there be a multi-provider model established in Ontario, and the government has not yet accepted that. We are hoping that the government will, in fact, go forward with that, and we're continuing to try to impress upon the government the importance of that. That would strengthen consumer protection uh, much further, we believe, and put it in line with other provinces uh, in Canada. Mm -hmm. And that's a key difference from what Justice Cunningham has recommended to what the government has so far announced. So we remain hopeful that the government will continue and uh, will break up Tarion's monopoly. Um, in the final report to the government, it was noted that uh, Tarion maintains a builder directory that allows members of the public to access information online about a builder. As structured, the builder directory has shortcomings. Karen, um, how difficult is it currently for home buyers to find out if the builder they're working with has a history of complaints about the quality of the work in their homes? It is extremely difficult. Currently, the consumer in Ontario has no reliable objective source of knowing that, getting that information. And Terion has known about this problem for, for over a decade now, many, many years. Uh, we have been raising this from the outset. Terion has the data. Terion has the technology. Terion has the resources. We have been counting on Terion to do that. They have not. That's a very serious problem in our view. Mm -hmm. Minister McCharles agreed with that problem back when Kenyon first reported this a few years ago in the Toronto Star. But to uh, Terry on, part of Terry on's response has been to consumers, well, check our directory, but also do your own research. And they've talked about encouraging the, the consumers to go door to door and asking people. Well, it's important to recognize that many people will never disclose the construction defects with their home if someone comes knocking on the door or otherwise. Why? Many consumers are concerned about lowering their own property values. Yeah. Uh, they're concerned about upsetting their neighbors because often construction defects in, in neighborhoods are systemic. So for anyone to suggest to go knock on doors is just totally unrealistic. This is a very important database that needs to be developed, needs to be accurate, and needs to be available to the public. Um, you mentioned Minister Mac Charles uh, acknowledging this before, but in this right. week's announcement, was there? Did we have anything to say about what what information should be on the directory? Was there any information on that? Um, I don't think anybody's gotten into that level of detail lately. Uh, so as one example of something that CPBH has always maintained needs to be disclosed and very clearly is violations of the Ontario Building Code. You hear me talking a lot about this. This is a very serious issue to really distinguish between some of the cosmetic construction defects and code violations. So whatever directory is developed by whomever, that needs to be clearly established and made available to the public, in our opinion. Kenyon, you've reported that most of Terion's revenue comes from home enrollment fees. What are those? Home enrollment fees are paid by consumers when they buy a new home mm -hmm. uh, to enroll their home in the Terion New Home Warranty Plan. And um, that is where... cost? Uh, they can cost anywhere between $500 and $1,600 approximately, depending on the value of the home. Um, and that goes to uh, Terry on it's the main source of their revenue. They make some money from investments as well and from uh, registration fees for builders as well. And when the consumer buys it, they think that if I have a problem, I have this warranty, it can be resolved, right? Yeah, all new homes in Ontario uh, come with it. It's, it. You have to have a, a Terry on home warranty plan with your new home. Is there a conflict between where the money for Tarion comes from and the makeup of their board of directors? Yeah, so that was something that I looked at in my investigation. Um, when I had originally started looking at this issue in 2013, uh, the board makeup um, uh, governing Tarion had more builders on it than consumer advocates or uh, government advocates or government oversight people. Um, and uh, since that story initially came out in, in 2013, the government has made the balance, uh, ha has adjusted the balance. So now we have about 50% builders and 50% non-builders on, on, uh, on, the, on the board of directors. And Karen, uh, will this potential conflict be addressed by the new structure the government is addressing? 
Well, we certainly hope so. Um, again, a lot of those details are yet to be announced, mm -hmm. but obviously we feel that uh, there needs to be strong consumer representation. Uh, people who have actually been through the process, uh, that is a really critical consideration. You don't know what this is like until you've walked in these shoes and you know you know, what it's like to have a home that's fundamentally flawed, to have a builder that's non-responsive, and then to have a warranty provider that's non-responsive. So that consumer experience is very, very important. So that's something we're going to certainly be continuing to talk to the government of Ontario about, is having knowledgeable, experienced consumers sitting on that board of directors. Well, some people might say that when it comes to, like, the College of Physicians, or the Law Society, most of the people that sit on those boards are people in those professions. So how is it different for Terion if it's uh, uh, developers who are sitting on the board? Doesn't that make sense? Um, well, no, uh, not really uh, to me and to our organization. Mm -hmm. This is supposed to be a consumer protection organization, not a builder protection organization. Uh, you can get builders' input and builders' views in different ways. For example, they could have an advisory board of builders, but to have a board dominated by builders, as it has been for most of the past 40 years, and, and still there's too much builder influence in the Terry on board as far as we're concerned. So no, no, we don't see the need to have such a top-heavy builder board. We think consumers are the best people to speak on behalf of consumers and consumer protection. Can you want to add Yeah, to I think uh, that point that, that Karen was making was highlighted by Justin, Just, Justice Cunningham in his report, mm -hmm. where um, there is a, at least an appearance or uh, there could be actual conflicts of interest in the way Tarion is currently set up, which led him to suggest that the two functions be separated. The warranty provider become its own entity and the regulator become uh, a new designated administrative authority. And will the dispute resolution process between homeowners and builders be improved by the new structure? Do we know this? Um, we don't know yet. I think they're going in the right direction. Uh, what Minister McCharles was saying about a homeowner not having to necessarily prove the cause of a defect, that will go a long way, I think, in, in helping homeowners dealing with the claim because that's a, that's a quite a, a, a big step for someone to take. If you're not an engineer or you're not an expert in heating and, and ventilation, to just have enough to say, I think there's something wrong, I think that will go a long way to help resolve some of the issues we've been seeing. Karen, um, is this a done deal or is there a chance that there will be more adjustments to the new structure being proposed for new home buyer protection? Well, we're certainly hoping it's not a done deal. We see this as a very positive step in the right direction, uh, but we will continue to encourage the government of Ontario to end the monopoly model and to offer a competitive model like so many other jurisdictions in Canada has done. We think that's fundamentally important for consumers and for consumer protection. So uh, we will continue to talk to the government and uh, uh, communicate with them the need for that fundamental change in the model. Karen, you've been fighting for this for 13 years. How did you take this um, week's announcement? Well, we're pretty happy. <laughs> um, it has been an incredible week. Um, we have a lot of work ahead of us yet. This is a very complex situation. We recognize that. We also recognize and want to highlight that there are good builders in Ontario, and we recognize that. But there are, there are poor and marginal builders that really need to be addressed. But overall, to answer your question, this has been a great week for Ontario as far as we're concerned. And Kenyon? The same question? Um, well, I mean... I mean, you've been covering this story since 2013. Right. I actually didn't expect uh, the government to do anything. The, the message that we had been receiving was that Tarion, while it wasn't perfect, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's doing a relatively decent job in terms of the government's eyes. Um, so this, this was... Although I will say, as soon as they appointed um, Justice Cunningham to start looking at Tarion and the new Home Warranties Plan Act, you start to think, okay, maybe they're serious about making change here. Um, but yeah, it's been. I started covering this almost four years ago, so uh, it's it's been it's been a few years. <laughs> so when you heard the announcement, thoughts first thoughts? Well, I, I was just surprised. Number one, that it was going to happen, and um, you know, whenever you work on something, obviously it's 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 gratifying when something changes as a result. But mm -hmm. um, really, this is an issue uh, for you know people who are buying new homes, and and I think this will address some of the concerns that we've, we've, we've highlighted, both Karen and in my reporting as well. Well, thank you for being here to help us break down the issue. We appreciate that. Thank you. Good to uh, be here. The same to you, Karen uh, Somerville. Thank you. Thank you.
Take My care. My pleasure. Thank you. Help TVO create a better world through the power of learning. Visit TVO.org and make a tax-deductible donation today.